All right. So uh, today we're going to talk about file systems. Today is our first session, and we're going to continue this on Thursday. Um, and uh, so last session we talked about virtual memory. Hope everyone like you know studied this. Uh, make sure you understood what we covered last session about, you know, the different uh, scheme, what's going on, actually ha what happens exactly during a page fault, what was like, you know, thrashing, dirty bits. Make sure you understand all of those. And uh, so, uh, submit your design doc. I mean, you, you've submitted that. <laughs> and uh, this week, you still need to continue towards uh, your project. I'm going to talk about a little bit on project three and uh, some changes in it. Um, so I'll make those announcements at the end of the lecture. So by the week before this, we asked you oh, uh, as a like a you know um, optimistic gui guideline or timeline to have uh, done with argument passing last Friday. So who is done with argument passing at this point? Raise your arm. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Okay, that is really uh, not as many as I expect, okay? So, at least I was hoping that by this weekend, all of you are done, okay? So, uh, just know that, again, you might have a bit of an obstacle next week when you haven't, like, you know, because at this point, it's difficult for you to even divide. So, you should spend time with your teammates. I was hoping that you will do it in the weekend. Uh, get the argument passing done, and after that, there is, like, you know, hope and clear vision at least of, uh, that what you're doing so you can implement different system calls and then basically a system call handler you have to like uh, you know delegate uh, this again is this project is easier than project one to separate and then you know divide between you so make sure you do that otherwise it's just like a, you're not utilizing your you know your teammates and potential of your team okay and which is already expected and uh basically considered in the workload of the project, okay? Um, so, yes, project two has more workload in terms of like coding, but it's easier to divide. So you don't have to like sit with each other and, you know, basically implement everything. Um, homework two is, uh, homework three is again due on Thursday, so make sure you bring it to the class. If you cannot, uh, you can bring it today or tomorrow to uh, my office. If anything happens uh, before the end of the before the start of the lecture, take a picture, send it to me, and then I'll collect it later. All right. So today we're going to talk about file allocation methods on disk and uh, file uh, free space management. This is not file free space management. All right. So uh, a little bit of background about like what is a disk and a file on a file system. Right. So when we talk about like a disk, we're talking about a secondary storage device. So, such as magnetic disk, hard drives, uh, it can be like a flash drive, it can be, I guess, SSD, it can be, you know, other means of storage, which is persistent, and uh, it's used to basically store your data, you know, uh, so that, you know, it doesn't go away uh, on the reboot, okay? So, the disk have a different means of communication with the system. So a hard drive, for example, can be using like an IDE uh, cable and you know protocol, or it can be serial like SATA. Uh, it can be uh, like flash drives. They have like you know USB, and you know on the, the USB is uh, the physical port. But then on top of that, how the driver actually like passes information in what chunks, in what order. So this is something that is specific to the disk. And uh, obviously, the operating system wants to make an abstraction, right? So that's why there are layers of file system. And so the devices uh, like communicate with an I.O. controller on your system. And then that will give them basically a very basic communication to the disk, right? So what to do, uh, what is requested, and retrieve the data in whatever format that they define. Now... But above that is the basic file system, which tells the device that, you know, this is the data I want to be saved at this, you know, location. So the disk is like, you know, a huge uh, addressable um, space that you can store or load. And uh, so the basic file system, for example, can say, okay, I want to store this data on, on this part or vice versa. And then the I.O. controller again, you know, splits that or communicate that with the device. Now, 
uh, a file and it, and it goes all, all the way up. So, you know, you have like higher levels that, you know, as a, as a program, you say, okay, I want to create a file here or I want to copy this directory. But what's going to happen actually on the disk, the, the disk you have no idea. Your user level programs, they don't care, right? So, a uh, file itself is basically a logical view of the data, right? So, if a user or a program wants to store, you know, some data, it doesn't care where it's like saving. It doesn't care even if it's like actually saving on a device or it's on a network or it's on a memory. It doesn't care. It only uh, needs to address it like as a file abstraction. And... Um, so the, the file itself is viewed by the user as a container that has data. It has a, it has a, like a name. It has a size. It has uh, it, it is addressable contiguously, right? So the file uh, it's just like a you know a stream of data, right? Well, you know you can have binary files, text files, whatever. But from the perspective of the user, it's contiguous. You know, byte one, byte two, byte three, byte four. I don't care how many bytes are stored uh, in the disk. So, for example, that's not the case with the disk. The disks, for example, the hard disk, they have sectors because they have, you know, the magnetic uh, tracks and then they have like a head. And then when they, you know, move, they don't actually read or write bytes. They read uh, sectors, uh, which is, it depends on the device. So the sector can be, for example, 512 bytes or it can be 4 kilobytes, right? This is what is defined by the disk. And that's how the I.O. controller should manage that, right? But the file from the uh, view of the user is just like, you know, a stream of bytes, one at a time, right? So a file it can have like sequential access or random access. So uh, like a text file, you like open up and then you can read, you know, one byte at a time, you know, continuing. Or you can move on to the middle of the file and want to, you know, read something there. If you know what... Uh, uh, how a file is defined, again, these are like higher levels, but uh, if you have a header, if you have like a movie and you want to just like, you know, jump in the middle of it, right? Obviously, there's, there are some headers that will tell you, okay, if you want to move to the second of, I don't know, uh, 40th minute of this movie, where in that contiguous logical view of the file you want, right? Uh, so that's random access. You don't, you can jump around in a file, okay? And a file system is a part of the operating system that obviously is providing this abstraction. It's giving the API uh, and like like an interface uh, to the user and say, okay, you don't care like what I'm dealing with here. It's like if it's an SSD, if it's you know hard drive, if it's flash, if it's network, uh, you just you know communicate with me through these means. Obviously, some of them will be the system calls that you're going to implement. Uh, so, you know, uh, you can address a file, this is the tree or the structure of a directory, you know, uh, that is, uh, again, all the implementation of the operating system as an interface to the user, okay? So, and then on the underlying, the operating system is implementing all of these, right? So, from the logical file system, it now has to, like, organize the file system uh, to the disk. Basically, define how the file system should, uh, like, map whatever the user wants or sees to the underlying hardware, right? So, let's say we have, like, a, again, 10 kilobyte file. If the hard disk is, like, you know, sectors and it's now chunks. So, if the user wants that specific byte, which chunk the operating system should retrieve, and within that chunk, which byte it is, where that chunk is on the disk drive, how that chunk should be retrieved from the hard disk. This is all layers of the file system. All right? Any question? All right, moving on. So, because the operating system wants to do that, they need to basically have a uh, allocation method on the disk, right? Again, like, this is the vast... You can actually think of the, you know, disk uh, as, you know, these chairs here, right? So, this is just like a long track of blocks on the disk, and now you have a file, and now you you need to basically find space for this file uh, to store it, right? And then you you should be able to address it, uh, you know, wh whenever the user wants to access one piece of this file, the operating system should be, t uh, should be able to tell which exact location on the disk drive 
uh, you know, I should look for, for that piece of data. And in order to do that, there are ways or methods to allocate space on uh, the disk drive, right? So one is contiguous allocation, the other is linked and indexed. Obviously, there are others, but these are the examples that we're going to talk about. So <clears throat> these, there are similarities to this and what we have already learned in memory, right? If you remember, memory was also having the same idea. There is a physical memory, and then there is the logical view of the user, which is the uh, logical address space. And then there was paging in between to map these pages to the frames, right? And then the, the page table, the frame table, whatever, you know, these were all some similarities, right? So you can tell, for example, what is a contiguous allocation. A contiguous allocation is when you, uh, if, if you have like, you know, a, a file which, you know, is 10 kilobytes, you store it as 10 contiguous blocks, uh, 10 kilobytes contiguous blocks on hard drive, right? So the initial thought that can, uh, again, if it resembles what we learned in paging or segments, right? Memory allocation. What is the problem with contiguous allocation? Anyone? Yes. Internal, fragment, uh, internal fragmentation, okay? I mean, internal fragmentation is actually the problem with all of them, and that actually has to do with sectors, okay? Let's get into it. Uh, the problem was finding the location, right? Uh, so, yes, external fragmentation in the sense that, you know, we have, like, holes that we cannot use them, right? The exact same thing that we were, like, facing in the... Uh, the, the when we had like the, the segments with various sizes, right? And that, that again was because we were like, you know, uh, allocating the same, you know, 200 kilobytes of data that the user wanted on the memory just like that. So the problem is that, you know, we will start like, you know, fitting again uh, data to holes. And the problem is now that we have like, you know, those little gaps, which we call external fragmentation. So... The internal fragmentation is also there, and again, that happens in all of them, because of the sectors. The, because the sectors are, are all fixed sizes, so all of the you know, sectors, let's say, there are like uh, 512 bytes. Now, if I have a file which is 700 bytes, well, it has to occupy two blocks, right? It, can, it, like, it, it cannot just you know, help that. So, because of, that's like the fixed page sizes or fixed frame sizes. We all have, they all have internal fragmentation. All right. So for contiguous, uh, the, it gives you the performance in the best case because it's simple, right? You start it, you know where the file exists, you know all the offsets that starts from there. So, you know, if you know that you want the nth byte from the logical view, you just know the address of the starting. So you just add them up and then, you know, you get it. So uh, it is also simple because the implementation, the, the things that you, the operating system needs to keep is simple. You only need the address and the size, right? The number of blocks that is associated with that, right? The, the problem is finding space for a file because of the external fragmentation. So we might have, again, you know, uh, available space on the disk drive, but we cannot fit one file which might be a little bit bigger than uh, what we need. The other one is estimating a file size at creation. So a lot of the times you're not copying an existing file, but rather you are creating a file and then storing things and then growing it, right? So when a new file is being created, where I should put it? I have no idea of, you know, your usage. If, you, if I put it in some uh, hole that does not have enough space, then you can only grow it at some, uh, up to some point. And then as the operating system, I have to move it somewhere else is, that has, you know, more. Especially if, for example, you use best fit. You remember best fit allocation? It was to, to put the file in the smallest available hole. So that means you have like the smallest available growing, right? So this is a, one of the problems with the contiguous. And, and uh, so the, for the external fragmentation, you can have compaction. And uh, that is, again, as you like, you know, start to grow or, you know, you, you feel that, you know, you have like too many holes or... Uh, you, the utilization of your disk space is low, then you can move things around, like, and, you know, defrag them, and then make space, okay? But that's uh, going to be expensive, right? That's going to take a lot of, like, CPU and I.O., keep your disk busy, and uh, so that's the downside with contiguous, right? 
So this is how your disk would probably look. You see, so it starts from here, and you know these are each of them is a block and uh, going on. And so this is, for example, let's say uh, the you know how your directory looks and the information that is kept. So uh, the file count starts at block zero and the length is two, so zero and one. File tr starts at like block number fourteen and its length is three, so uh, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And like f is at six with size two, six and seven, so on. All right. So again, simple, easy to understand, but uh, problems with implementation and util utilizing. All right. So now let's see how the address translation work. So the address translation again, just remember, it's a mapping between what the user perceives and what actually is going to happen on physical device, right? So if the user wants to address some uh, logical address, right? Byte number, uh, I don't know, 12,536, right? So where is that on the disk drive, right? The operating system should divide this by the size of the block. Let's say we have like 512 bytes block sizes. And then this gives you a quotient and a remainder. So the quotient will be the block number, right? And the remainder will be the offset within that block, right? So it's just like how to uh, access it. You already have the starting address of this file. You add the number of blocks, move into that block. There's always a, in the, in the disk terms, we have a seek time because then your, the headers on, 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 of your disk has to move to that block, right? And then uh, the uh, displacement into that block is R. You just like make that, you know, a physical address and, you know, IO, controller, whatever that goes on, retrieve the data or source it. All right? Any question? Good? All right. So next is a linked allocation. So a linked allocation is, uh, is trying to solve the problem of external fragmentation by basically spreading and scattering the data over, you know, smaller chunks. So how does it do it? It basically allocates a pointer within each block to the next block of the data, right? So the file, you know, gets here. It does not matter where each block go. It can be completely scattered. It can be contiguous. It doesn't matter. Each block will point to the next block. That block will point to the next block. And then this way, the operating system basically can find where the file is, right? So uh, it is. Uh, it only needs the starting address because it doesn't even need to know the size, right? You can jump next, next, like a linked list, and uh, until you meet the last block, right? For example, the one that has this pointer to zero or negative one. That will be the end of five. And there is no waste of space because it can basically utilize all the blocks. There's no waste of space in terms of external fragmentation, right? It can use all of the blocks. And you don't have to defrag at all. Like, you know, you don't have to do that to make space, right? What are the downsides for linked list? First of all, you don't have random access. You, you cannot just jump to the 50th block of this file. You have to start from the starting point and then see where the next block is, where the next block is, where the next block is. And then, if each block is now scattered... scattered all, all over the place, for each block, you might need to seek to a different track. So, because they're not contiguous. <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, remember, the disk drives, for example, the SSDs, they don't care. You give them the address, they read. But uh, magnetic disk drive, they have the seek time. So, once the head is at a location, it's easier and much faster to start reading because like it's spinning and it can read the next block and next block and next block, right? Uh, but the seek time is usually longer because it's actually moving, uh, you know, the head and uh, that's usually order of magnitude, you know, uh, takes longer, right? So uh, that's one of, the, uh, one of the benefits, for example, for contiguous allocation. Um, but for random, again, that's just like for each block and then you, have, you don't have random access that takes a long, long time, right? The other one is extra space required for the pointers. So if you're basically allocating a pointer within each block, you're wasting the space, not because of external allocation, but because basically waste in the data structure itself, right? So compared, like, if, relatively, it's not huge. 
even if you consider like you know 512 bytes, um, and then the pointer. In, in our example, we consider it to be one byte. That's not realistic. It's like a pointer, so at least you know four bytes. Um, so that's less than a percent. Um, but still, you know, it is a waste of you know space. And a one percent in a terabyte would be like what ten gigabytes. So that's not you know unnoticeable, right? How, uh, so you can get around this by actually uh, uh, writing or reading in clusters. So clusters are chunks of chunks. So although the sectors or uh, the blocks that you write on uh, the hard disk is you know defined, but then you have uh, one means of uh, storing. So let's say in, again in our examples you have 512 bytes and you can write 500 bytes at a t- uh, 512 bytes at a time on a disk drive, right? So clustering means, for example, I'm going to take four of each block and you know pack them together and so each cluster will just point to the next cluster. So this way, instead of like losing a pointer in each block, I'm going to lose one pointer in four blocks, right? So, uh, but this increase, increases the, external, uh, the internal fragmentation because now I'm allocating one cluster to each file even if the file is like tiny, right? So this is just like, uh, you know, pros and cons. Um, and uh, the, pro- the actual problem, or the main problem with the uh, linked allocation is reliability. If you rely on all these blocks to find the next blocks, so if one block gets corrupted, what's going to happen? Right? Let's say, you know, you have like a huge file, and then your block number three gets corrupted. You lose the access to the whole file, right? If your block three points to a free space, then the rest of your file will be, you know, free space because the free spaces are also, for example, linked, right? Or a different file. So that is like not in really, you know, uh, desirable. Yes? Um, I don't know about any real... I, yeah, actually, uh, operating systems use different file systems. Yeah, you can have, for example, different drives or partitions, right? So, so in a... In a, in a in an actual real operating system, um, I don't know if they emulate that or actually implement it, because they might still emulate it, right? Um, I haven't taken a look at, the, for example, how Linux implements I don't know, FAT or NTFS, but I think it, they actually implement it, uh, because if you want to emulate that, it will just like be a lot of overhead. <clears throat> All right, so. Uh, this can be like mitigated a little bit, but by, for example, instead of like one link list and then storing the start, uh, you can have a double link list and also store the end. So, you know, uh, each block is pointing to the next block, but also pointing to the previous block. So if one block gets corrupted, it will point to a block, but that block is not corrupted, hopefully. So it doesn't point to this block. So then the operating system realizes, oh, something is going on, and then, you know, figure something out or read the file from the other side and try to correct it. Uh, but overall, it's, you know, these are the issues with this one, all right? So this is how it looks. So the file can, like, uh, you know, keep the start and the end of this, and then the starting block is number nine. It has some data, but it also points to the next block, which is this one. Again, it stores some data, but points to this one. This one points to this one. This one points to this one. So on and so forth, all right? So, how the translation works in the linked uh, allocation is uh, s- that you, you're using some space for the pointer. Again, in this example, we're considering one byte. That's not realistic. Uh, so, you, you still, your data is still in, in, the, in the blocks. So, you still do the division, but within each block, you're using 511 bytes of your data. So, you divide the logical address by 511. You get the quotient, and then that shows you which block is your, uh, your data in. And you have to find that block in the link chain by starting and then moving on to the next and next and next. Once you find the block, you have the offset. You have to, like, if the pointer is at the start of the block, obviously you have to add one, so you actually get your data, right? This is how the, the address can uh, basically translate from logical to the physical, all right? So... Uh, now, 
the problem of a linked allocation can be mitigated instead of like jumping around the hard, like the hard drive like that for each block, for each, you know, uh, finding next block. So it can be uh, mitigated by FAT or file allocation table. So file allocation table is just a table of blocks and their uh, links, right? So at the start of the volume, for example, you can have this. And uh, so this basically will show you that, okay, so this, this file starts on this block, right? This is your directory entry. Now your file allocation table has uh, for each block, so it has all the entries for the whole drive, but for each of them, it doesn't actually store any data. It only stores the pointer, right? So if the file starts at uh, block 217, instead of like jumping around starting from block 217 to the next block to the next block, the operating system can quickly take a look at the allocation table and says, okay, so 217 points to 618. 618 points to th 339. 339 points to what? So quickly in one table, you just like iterate to find your block number and then just like, you know, access that block number. Eight. And the good thing about this is, first of all, all of this is happening in one location, right? So even if you're doing it on the hard drive itself, it, the seek time will be quick because you don't have to jump you know, all, all over the place. So the other good thing is that because it is like using this allocation table specifically for this purpose and it's much smaller than a you know, the file itself. So the operating system can cache this, right? So let's say you um, can do, uh, I guess like we, we are seeing some numbers in the next e example, but uh, the number of blocks is in the order of uh, two to the power of uh, 30, I guess. Uh, and so that would be, Billion points. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the table size can be defined by the size of your partition. But again, because for, for, uh, for each block, you're storing one uh, pointer only, you're, you're basically uh, not wasting a lot of extra. That will be the same amount that you would still waste in each block. But instead, it's first of all, it's packed. And again, uh, it speeds up, okay? Uh, so also it like makes allocation of new blocks very simple, right? So how you would like find a new block for a new file in, uh, in, in a linked location? So you would uh, basically need to find, uh, you know, free blocks and then you need to like uh, allocate one and then point it to that and then that to that, right? Uh, so if you have this one, it's easy to find available blocks because you only need to like, you know, look for the blocks who are not pointing to anything or they have like, you know, zero in front of them. And then that would be like the first block. Now, if you need another block, you find another block that has like the zero entry. And again, this is pretty fast in one table, which is probably, you know, cached in memory. And then you can easily put the address of this in this. And now you have a, uh, you know, basically you've grown your block. Okay. Okay. Should we close them? All right. Uh, any question on this? Moving on to the next one. All right. So the next one is index allocation. So index allocation, yes. What's that? So uh, that that is that that's just like makes it easier to find uh, you know moving through the links. So this is helping that, right? It's still the same scheme of you know linked blocks, right? But and the storage on the disk is still the same. But bringing that into a table like this will increase, like make it faster to find a block, like to seek within a file, to move on, you know, to find where is that block, instead of like needing to actually jumping block by block to do so. Okay. All right. So the index allocation is basically bringing all the pointers into the index block. 
So this makes it simpler. Uh, so uh, you have an index table, and then uh, like for each file you have an index table basically. And so for uh, within the index table you you will point to all the blocks. So if a file has like 50 blocks, you, you, there will be an index table of like size 50, and then it will tell okay block number zero is stored like in this block, block number one is stored in this block, block number. Th- so this way, the first access to a file is accessing its index table, and then you have the offset within the index table, and then that will point you to the block. What does it resemble in memory? You, you had an example in memory, right? When you have a table that like points you to the right allocation. Yeah, yeah, the page table, right? This is what it looks like the page table. So each access the, to the file uh, requires uh, t- to take a look at the index table of that file, and then that within offsets within that index table shows where that specific block is, and then obviously you have the offset that you add, so you know makes things simple. And so this supports direct access because you don't have to jump around the blocks or you know follow a link chain to find where the block is because the index table has all the blocks indexes contiguous, right? So you only need to look at in the index table immediately, right? And it prevents external fragmentation because again, it, the, the blocks, the actual data blocks can be scattered and you have like a one index table for each file, which, you know, points you to the right location. Uh, so there's no fragmentation or, you know, waste of a space between different file blocks, right? Now the problem is high pointer overhead and waste of the space. So first of all, you're allocating this index table somewhere, right? So this itself is, uh, overhead. And, uh, if, if you are about, if you need to access this page table, well, I mean not page table, the index table for each access, that's something that, like uh, the problem that we see with the page table, right? Each access to different block need you to take a look at the index table. Again, next access to the different block, you have to access this one. So that basically doubles your time, right? So we already saw a, a kind of a solution to this. How, how could we like reduce this overhead time? Come on. Add another index table. Okay, that okay, that actually is uh, yes, that is uh, solving the size issue. But the, how about the timing issue? How can we prevent from visiting this page, uh, like the index table on the disk every time? Hmm? Move it to memory. Yeah, move it to memory. For example, we can cache it as long as the file is open. So it's probably going to be used, right? So we can cache this index table, for example. We don't have to like bring it all, uh, bring all of it to memory, maybe, because in a lot of cases, actually, uh, you know, the access will not be totally random. It, it will be, you know, sequential blocks, so you might know when the next block is, so you can, you know, catch that. So, you know, there are other ways to mitigate that. But the waste of the space is something that we have to figure out. Because, for example, even if your file uh, is like, you know, 10 bytes, right? You open a text file and you, you write down hello, right? And it's just like 5 bytes. And now, uh, f- for that file, you still need the same index table, right? So only the first block will be occupied, but so so the hello itself will be stored in one block, right? That that is one block of the data. But now you have to have another bl- uh, block or blocks to hold the index table. Now the problem is, how large should the index table be? So uh, let's take a look at how it looks first, and then on the next slide we're going to talk about it. So this is how the index is. So the directory talks about only, keeps only the index block, and the block 19 holds the information for the file itself, right? So this is the you know the the the, the block number zero is stored in block number nine, block number one is stored in number 16 and so on and so forth, and then for the rest of the blocks that are not used, for example, it's negative one, okay? So, one thing that just catches uh, in terms of reliability, what's the issue with this? What would be the issue with storing all the information about the file in one block? Mm -hmm. 
So in a file, if you know, if you have a, like a you know, let's say Harry Potter, you know, book stored in TXT, right, all over the you know blocks. Now, if you lose a couple of blocks, that might be a couple of you know lines or paragraphs or you know a page at most, right? But the rest of the file is still there. But if the index block gets corrupted, then you can't find the whole file and you lose it, right? So there are ways to get around this, obviously. So, for example, to have copies of the index table, have uh, you know CRC or some checksums or something, so that the, the index table can be recovered, right? Because again, that w- that's a little bit important. That that is the same as for something like you know uh, the boot sector of your uh, hard drive. You know, if your boot sector like gets corrupted, the system cannot boot, right? So the, there are ways that to have a backup of that or, you know, there, there are ways to at least uh, re- know that it is corrupted so don't just rely and then, you know, load garbage. So the same thing can happen in this. But let's see. The, uh, the address translation in the index is simple. It's uh, basically uh, you, you, you can uh, get the, whole, the, the same scheme that we use in the block in this, in this case, the, block, the data blocks are completely used. So that if they're like 512 bytes, they're completely being used, right? Uh, however, so you have the um, displacement into the index table, which is Q. Then you load that. You, displacement, you, you get the block number, basically the address of the physical block. And then you have the displacement into the block. Again, looks very similar to the paging, right? And so... The problem here is like this is an example. If if uh, if the file is maximum 256 kilobytes and block size of 512 bytes, we need only one block for index table. But that's not going to be, uh, you know, the case. You don't have the you know you don't want a maximum file size of 256 kilobyte on your computer. How are you going to store the rest of you know the stuff? Like how many files you have? which is less than that, right? So, if you grow your index block, then it's just like a waste of space, right? Let's take a look at this. If your index block is too small, then the size of the, fil- the file will be limited. This is just what I discussed, right? So, it, you have the index table from zero to, you know, the last index. That defines the number of blocks that your file can be. So if the index uh, table is small, then you have like limited number of blocks for your file that basically limits the size of your file. Now, if you make the index too big, then it will cover more, the, the table itself will cover more blocks. And again, you're probably not going to use a lot of those indexes for a lot of the small files, which are a lot, and especially, you know, in your file, uh, in your operating system itself, you know, right? not your personal files or, you know, videos, but there are a lot of files that are small. So that's going to waste a lot of uh, space on your disk, right? So there are some ways to get around this. The first is a linked scheme. So the index block itself can be a linked list. So you only allocate one index block to each file. Now, if a file is less than the 256 kilobytes, for example, that can be allocated within you know, all these you know, index tables, then that's fine. You allocate one uh, block to the index table and one or many blocks to the data, right? For some uh, for some files, it's still waste because you like, if your if your file is like one or two blocks and then you're allocating one index block, that's still you know a lot of relative uh, waste of space. But that's what you're gonna do, right? But instead, now if your file grows and it doesn't fit into one block, what you can do is in the last entry of the block, instead of actually uh, an address to a, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, the last entry in your index block, instead of uh, pointing to an actual data block, you can point to a different index block. So this way you have... Uh, the the index blocks linked together. Let me. I don't have this one on this, so I'm just going to draw it here. Quick. Uh, yeah, no, it's not going to be good. I'm going to put it on this. So, 
this is one block, right? Let's say it has 512 bytes, right? And let's say for each pointer, we are like having four bytes, right? Uh, so we divide 512 by 4, and that gives us 128 indexes, right? And so each block has, again, if the block size is this, that might not be the case. Uh, that depends on your operating system itself. And again, the physical sector or block size can also be different. So you can do, I think it was uh, on the lecture's note itself, if you do in your Ubuntu or uh, Unix system, you write down sudo fdisk-l that lists your, you know, partitions and for each of them there will be like, you know, what is the logical uh, block size and the physical block size. So then you'll know. Uh, for larger disks, usually it makes more sense to have like larger blocks because the space and the waste is less of an issue, but the speed of, you know, retrieving data is more important. Okay? So you have like 128 indexes, so from 100 and 0 to 127. Now, if you have like a fixed allocate uh, index table, if you allocate one block, then you have like, you know, exactly 128 blocks. So each block is this. If you multiply that, that would get like what? This is 202 to the power of 7, multiply 2 to the power of 9, that's 2 to the power of 14. That is uh, 16K, I suppose, right? So this will be the limitation of your file size, right? If you uh, have just assigned one block to index, uh, that's the minimum that you will assign to the index table. But now your file sizes will be limited to this. Now if you assign two blocks, so let's say I'm assigning two index blocks, and let's say for this purpose, uh, like they're contiguous, right? So two blocks is under uh, 1,024 bytes, right? And that's uh, divided by two uh, by four, which is the size of the you know a pointer. That gives you 256 indexes, right? And then that that basically doubles the number of uh, blocks that you can have, right? Okay? So, but again, the problem is still persists. Now, what the double, uh, the, the length, sorry, the length uh, index tables does is that So the first block index block has always this one as like zero or negative one, okay? So that gives you like one less data block, which is like in, instead of like 128, that gives you 127 blocks, right? So then you can have like, you know, your blocks, you know, stored and up to 127 of them can be linked in, uh, directly from this, right? And now if we need more data, we assign a different index table Right? The second block, the second index block, which now, this one can point to the next box, right? And has its own la last entry to negative one. But the only thing that we do need to do is now point this to this, right? So now, if you want to access, you know, the bytes within this file uh, that are like, you know, accessible within the first 127 blocks, you just read the first index block and access them. If you wanted to access further, and then you just like, you know, read the index block, access the next index block, and then, you know, move on. Okay? So this way, you save up a lot of space for your small files. You only allocate one block of index table. All right? Any question? So next is multi-level index, or two-level indexes, which allow file sizes of up to four gigabytes. So this is something like that we, again, uh, saw in memory in multi-level paging, 
right? So instead of allocating a, ta- a page table, uh, an index table, sorry, an index table that points to the blocks of data, in the first order we can have an index table which points to index tables. Each index table now will, uh, you know, uh, have uh, the, all the information about the blocks. So this way, we can, again, like we can speed things up with caching, but first, uh, we have like two levels, so that just like quickly uh, expands our uh, files sizes. Uh, but we don't have to allocate all of them to all uh, files. So if a file is just like, you know, small, it has its first level index table, and it only uses one second index table, all of the other ones, like these are not allocated and all the other entries here are negative one. So you only take a look at the first index table. It has the uh, address of the second index table. In this index table, it has the addresses of the blocks and negative one for whatever that is not used. Okay? So it allows, it is simple, it is implement, uh, but it allows for, you know, uh, big, uh, big si- file sizes of up to four gigabytes. And we also can have a combined scheme. So a combined scheme is, uh, we're going to t- take a look at it in the next slide as an example, but basically uh, is, for example, how uh, the inode is working in uh, Unix. So you have like one index table, and I mean one block that stores some information about the file, but about the block uh, addresses, it, it first has direct blocks, just like what, what we saw, right? And then it has three entries in the last that are not, instead of like just one entry that links to the next block, instead of that, it reserves three entries. The first entry is a link to indirect blocks. Right? So that will be the, like the, uh, a link to a second block of data. Then, if that was not even like, you know, uh, good enough, then the next entry links to a double indirect block which again, you know, expands even further. Even if that was like filled and not enough, then it will have a link to an in, like triple in, uh, indirect block. So that's just like allows gigantic files. Now, the good is that it is combined. So a lot of files don't, they're, ne- they're never going to use this. A lot of files never going to use this, right? But it allows you to do so. So let's take a look at the example. So this is how the inode is like stored in Unix, right? It has, you know, the the timestamps, you know, owners, it, uh, permission uh, permission uh, attributes, whatever. And then here, it has uh, the block information. So it has uh, the link to the the block that that is stored, the link that the se- uh, block number one is stored, the link to that are like uh, block number two is a sort all the way. So for all the small files, that is just like done. Now, if all of these entries are filled, meaning all of these data blocks are actually allocated somewhere and has a stored some information and we don't have anywhere else in this to you know, allocate directly, then we're going to allocate all the data blocks here and then have an index, like a secondary index block and then we're going to like link the, 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 this one to that table. So if a file has this uh, negative one, we don't care. We, the file is small, it can be accessible through these links. If the file is a little bit bigger, that didn't fit into all these blocks, then we can take a look at the single indirect uh, index table, which is a block of index table, which then points to other data blocks. So for these data blocks, we'll need a secondary uh, access for this block. All right? It just like gets a little bit, you know, one more level de- uh, depth. So if the file was even, you know, larger than that, that could not fit in, in these and could not be uh, uh, like even f- uh, larger than these 16 uh, kilobyte that was like ac- uh, addressable by this, then instead of like, you know, uh, zero or negative one here, we'll have a link to a data block which has the link, uh, links to index tables. Each index table, again, has the information about the block. So that, like, leaves you a lot of data to, the, to store there, right? And even if that was not enough, then we haven't, like, drawn it here, but you can have a triple indirect here. So this will be a link to a block that has links to blocks 
that has link to blocks. Right? And that obviously is going to like, you know, increase your access time, but how many of those gigantic files you have, right? So it, it is a, you know, a trade-off that is like, uh, they're trying to solve it like that. All right? Any question on these? Okay, let's move on. So what about the performance? How can we compare these algorithms against each other? Contiguous length and index. So first of all, it depends on the access type. So contiguous type is great for sequential and random access because you all have, you know, random access immediately from wherever you want. And uh, so, you know, it's just like if, if you're not accessing random, uh, then you're not benefiting from it being contiguous, you know, that much. So a linked allocation is good for sequential, but not random. Because if you're reading sequential, it's fine. You're reading one block at a time, preparing the next block and next block and next block. But if you want to try to read random, that's where the issue, you know, you have to like add the overhead of finding your blocks. Okay? Now, for this, for example, you can have an, like, an, you know, idea, uh, an idea is to declare access type at creation. And that will, you know, select either contiguous or linked. So, you know, if you declare a file that is always, you know, you want a sequential access, then uh, let's say, for example, if a file is encrypted. If a file is encrypted, ac like it depends on the ex uh, encryption scheme, of, obviously, but let's say in a, it's an encrypted file that's, you know, random access doesn't help. So, you know, you can declare it and then it can use the linked uh, scheme and, you know, save some space. So for indexed, it's a little bit more complex because it depends on the, you know, block sizes and uh, the access time is also depend on the way that we have the index uh, tables, whether it's like, uh, you know, one level direct, or two levels uh, combined, and then w w how many, uh, you know, the reads that you need for uh, to the index. If the file is a small, then you just like get one. If the file is large or scattered, so it's just like... Uh, a little bit more complex, all right? So let's go over this exercise together and, you know, uh, understand this. So consider a file system on the disk that has both logical and physical block size of 512 and assume that the information about each file is already in memory for each uh, of the three allocation strategies. Answer these questions. So first is, how is the logical to physical address mapping accomplished in this system? We already have talked about it, but let's see. For the index allocation, assume that a file is always less than 512 blo blocks long. So if we are currently at the 10th logical block, and then we want to move to the 4th logical block, kind of random access, how many physical blocks must be read from the disk? Okay, so let's think about it. So the contiguous, remember, for contiguous, we had the whole file you know, in, in one part of the disk, and the uh, the mapping is that we take the address, uh, the, the logical address, divide it by uh, the block size, which is 512, and then we get the Q and R. We move to the Q, uh, we have the starting block, we add the Q, and then we have the offset R. Okay? If you're currently at the 10th logical block of the file and want to access 4th, how many physical blocks must be read from the disk? Well, you don't have overhead, we have the information of the file, we don't, we have a, a random access, we just instantly can access the fourth block, just like that, right? Let's see. So, for contiguous, divide the logical by, uh, by 512, you get the X and Y, and you add the X, which is the number of the block, to the starting address, and update the physical block number, and then you have the displacement. And again, you can do this in one disk read, okay? Immediately access block number four. How about linked? So in the linked, the logical to physical address mapping with this is that you have to store one byte for each. So you divide instead of like 512 by 511. If it's a four byte pointer, you divide it by 508. And then you get the, again the X and Y. And now you cannot access block number X because it's a linked. So you have to start from block zero and you have to do, uh, you know, find the block X and then add the offset to it, okay? So, in this example, if you are in the 10th block and you want to move to the 4th block, 
in the simple example that we have like talked about linked, we don't have backwards. Uh, even if it did, it's simpler to actually start over from the f uh, first block, move to the fourth block one at a time, and then read it. So that would be considered uh, four blocks. The first block, you, you read, and then access to the f uh, second block. The second read, you get access to the third block. The third read, you get access to the fourth block. And then the, in the fourth read, you actually read the fourth block and uh, you know the displacement that you want. Okay? So the next would be uh, index. So in the index, what you do is that you basically read the index table and then you divide your logical address by 512 to get the x block and then the y offset. You read the x index from within the index table to find which block you need to read and then you read the uh, offset y within that block. So if you want to move to the, you know, block number four, you can have actually random access. You need one discrete to read the, the, uh, the index table, find the fourth block, and then read the second, uh, your second read will be reading a block, okay? So the same thing, you get the X and Y, you get the displacement, but to find the, uh, the X block, first you need to read the index ta table, and then read the block itself, all right? So, free space management. So, now, remember, the operating system needs to take care of the free space of the disk, right? It has to remember where are the free spaces and it should p uh, be able to, uh, you know, answer the user quickly. You know, it should not, like, scan the whole drive for free spaces, right? And, uh, basically uh, they, they need to reuse the same space because you, the files will get like created and then removed and then you know you, ha you have to now add them to the list of your free uh, blocks and um, so to implement these there are like algorithms to, uh, so one is linked lists and bit vectors grouping and counting okay so like we see just like uh, how they work uh, they're relatively simple. So the linked list is relative, to, uh, I mean, it's similar to the linked allocation. Instead of like data, we have the free list, right? So you have the list head, and now each free block, it doesn't have actual useful data, but it's actually just linking to the next free block. So this is like free, this is free, this is free, this is free, and you know, the same problems with the linked allocation. If you want, uh, I mean, if you just want the first free block, you can just access it by the head and then move your head, right? That's simple. But the problem, for example, is that if, you, if it gets corrupted, then how can you now figure out which blocks were free, right? Um, so the bit vectors, any question on this one first? I, mean, I thought that is relatively simple. All right. So the bit vector is... Uh, the one thing that is a little bit difficult in this is finding contiguous free blocks. So let's say for some reason you want a, a file to be stored in a contiguous space on disk, right? For example, because that will increase the uh, read speed for that specific file, right? If a file is stored all scattered, even if you can find it, you know, but still for read it, you know, from different random place you will have seek time of the head of the hard drive, right? So, even from the perspective of a file itself, it's best to be stored in contiguous space, right? So, even if the operating system wants to do that too, for performance reasons, in the f uh, list, uh, in the free linked list uh, method, it's difficult because it has to basically start here and then, you know, and then move on and then re checks. Is it still contiguous? Is it still contiguous? Okay. Now I have a four contiguous list here. And then I jumped here. And then from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have a six contiguous space over here. And then again here. So it's just like not really, uh, you know, uh, quick. It's really bad for doing that. So a bit vector helps that in, in the sense that it has a, uh, it stores a vector of bits. So for each block it stores one bit. Obviously, this is going to be like compact, right? Uh, because we don't have, you know, 
bit access, but you know, in this case, we don't care. So each block uh, in your hard disk is going to be allocated uh, either zero or one. If it's one, for example, it's free. If it's zero, it's not free. It's allocated, right? Then your whole disk will be represented by something like this, by, by, by something like this, and then this shows you easily the contiguous blocks, right? If you take a look at it, without even jumping to anywhere on the disk itself, you can say, okay, I have like, you know, five here, then I have like one, 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 and then I have like, just like that, right? And again, this bit vector is going to be very small. You can easily load it and work, uh, work with it in memory, whatever, modify it. And uh, again, relatively simple. Any question? All right. So, this is uh, an example. So, if the, this is the free list head, and these are actually our free uh, blocks, then the bit map is like this. The first is zero, it's not free, then it's free, 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 not free, not free, not free, 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 just like that. Okay? So, next is grouping. So, instead of storing information about each and every block individually, we can group them, right? So, in the grouping method, uh, it's, it's similar to the free list approach, but it stores, instead of like uh, linking uh, to, like from each free block to the next free block and then to the next free block, instead, it will store the information about the group of free blocks. So, this way, we say, okay, uh, uh, so, from this block, up to three blocks is free, and the next group of free blocks is move over there. So, it points to, uh, like, a, you know, uh, we, we're basically compacting them, right? Let me give you an example on this, if it helps. Actually, I don't think we need to. Is it, is it, uh, is it clear, or do I need to go to an example? Is it clear? Clear? Okay. I'll just bring it down. We actually have an example, so instead of like, you know, Blackboard, we, we see it on here. If it was not clear, then we go over it. Alright? So, this, this way, large number of free blocks can now be found quickly, because, you know, if you take a look at the first free block, it will already tell you how many blocks, you, you know, there are. So, if that's satisfying for you, you just, you know, you, you take that. If not, you move on to the next group, you know? So, then will be the counting. So, for the counting, instead of like storing the information in the block itself for, you know, as a group, we, uh, we allocate, uh, like a, in a list separately. So, in each entry, we keep the free spaces and the, 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 the number of them. So, instead of like, again, on the disk itself pointing to the next block, like, you know, the link, we actually keep a table and then we store, okay, at this location in the disk, we have two free blocks. At this location, we have four blocks. At this location, we have like, you know, five blocks. So this way, we waste a bit of a, you know, space on hard disk to, for, to keep this free table, but it will allow us much, you know, uh, like faster and easier access to find three blocks on the disk. And it also uh, is less prone to corruption, you know, if, if a free list or group is like corrupted in the previous schemes, it's going to be, make it harder to find the next ones. But if you have a list, we can protect it somehow. All right. So uh, this is an example. So if the bit, like this is just a, an example of size for bit vector. If the block size is two to the uh, power of twelve, like four kilobytes, and the disk size is one gigabyte, then the number of blocks that we need is two, uh, 200, two to the power of eighteen. And 2 to the power of 18, if we only one bit for each block, that's 2 to the power of 18 bits, which is uh, 2 to the power of 15 bytes, which is uh, how many megabytes? How many? Uh, 5 is 32 kilobytes. So the whole bit vector is like 32 kilobytes. It's not a big deal, right? But that saves a lot of space. Oh, it's already there. That was, I suppose, it was here. So I think. All right. So, it makes it easy to uh, find contiguous files, right? Now, um, linked list or the, or the free list cannot get contiguous space easily. You have to move on and count the next block and next block. And th this is, again, this is not very good. Uh, so, this is a modification for that and stores the address of n 
minus one free blocks and the next group in the first free block, right? Uh, and the group counting, again, just keeps the address of the first free block and the number of them, okay? So, this example basically shows all of them. So, free list is just like the link list like that. The bitmap stores one bit for each of them. The grouping is like this. So, you have the free list head here. Within the block number one is the group uh, that are like here, two and three. So, like, we are in the first free block. It has the next contiguous, like, blocks that are the part of the group in, like, two and three, and the pointer to the next group, which is seven. Within the seven, it, we, it's, again, a first block of some contiguous free blocks. In it, it stores, like, the, uh, you know, addresses of the next three blocks, eight and nine, and the pointer to the next group. In 12, we have, like, you know, a uh, pointer to the 14 and 15, 16. Uh, oh, this, this scheme, I think, is a little bit different than what this suggests. So, yeah. So, th th this can be uh, either the count, count the, like, the, you know, just like the 3 and the 7. In this case, the 12 would be just like 1 and... The 14 is basically just like the size of the, these four blocks I'm pointing to the next. Or in this case, in this example, this is actually, uh, you know, giving the addresses of each of the next n blocks into that. So even if they're not contiguous, like 12 can point to 14, 15, and 16. 16 can like, 7 can point to 8, 9, and 12. So it just like, again, makes the, it, it is a modification of the linked list and uh, makes, makes it easier. Now, the counting is the list. So, in the counting, you keep the list index like here. So, we have three, blo three blocks at address 1. That is 1, 2, 3. We have three blocks starting at address 7. That's 7, 8, 9. We have one block at address 12. Here. We have five blocks at address 14. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Right? So, this is like uh, simpler. And so, this is not, this is going to be not useful if uh, most of our Three blocks are one block, right? It's just going to be a lot of like, you know, one block, three block, one, three block. But if you have contiguous blocks, this is going to be helpful. All right? So, the next exercise is in terms of reliability and performance, compare bit vector implementation of a free block list with keeping a list of free blocks where the first few bytes of each free block provide the logical sector number of next free block. So, this, uh, actually the solution is going to be here, but you can go over it and we can talk about it in the next session. Exercise number two as well is given the current allocation on the disk of, in this figure, like these directories, show the linked list, bitmap, counting, and grouping representation of the free block disk. So, you know, take, it, uh, take some time and, and solve this. All right? So, make sure... Uh, well, this is gone, sorry. Uh, the syscall handler and syscalls, you have to implement those, uh, I mean this week. You should like get the syscall handler and get some of the easier syscalls done by the next, by this weekend. And uh, if there is any announcements regarding your project, we're going to post it on Piazza. Make sure you bring on your homeworks on Thursday.